find that during those two-man disadvantages that St. Louis had, there was Bourgeois just falling there. That gave Risebrow his one-on-one -on -one situation. Charles Bourgeois, outside of Rob Ramage, would have to be considered, perhaps even on a par with Ramage, as a penalty killer. And as a stalwart back there, his size, if nothing else, and his reach when you're down two men, he was unavailable for those penalty killing situations, and that in itself might have hurt the St. Louis Blues. He went off. Five minutes fighting, ten minute misconduct with Joel Otto. And at the time, we indicated that maybe that hurt Calgary more than the Blues because of Otto's importance. In front, Wamsley the save, trying to come back is Peplinski. But certainly that's not to belittle the importance of Charlie Bourgeois. Bill has pointed out. Natras around 400. Checked by Mullen. Bozek trying to get the puck loose. And finally, it's covered for a faceoff with two minutes, one second left in the second period. Boy, the complexion of this game really turned around with a host of penalties called against the Blues late in the first period, early in the second period, resulting in two different Calgary two-man advantages, and they scored on both of them to make it two to nothing. The thing to remember about that too, Ken, is that it really changes a lot of the factors that could be applied to this game. Both of these teams had to guard against looking ahead. The Blues looking ahead to Game 7, the Flames looking ahead to the Montreal Canadiens. And they also had to, they had to wonder if the Flames had that killer instinct. Well, that question has kind of been removed in a sense because of the penalties and because of the lead they've opened up. We can't see now in a hard-fought game whether the Flames had that killer instinct and whether each team would have looked ahead. Norwood for the Blues. Out to Gilmore and over his stick and McKinnis back. 22-year-old defenseman already in his third season with the Flames. Hock and Lube from Patterson. And it's Natras in trouble. Knocks Eves down. Here's Greg Pazlowski. Leave it for Natras. 1.20 to go in the second period. 4-1 Calgary trying to end this Campbell Conference Championship Series. There'll be a penalty as McKinnis hooks Doug Gilmore. And with a minute 11 to go in the second period, the Blues trailing by three will have the man advantage. Ken, it could be a very key time for the St. Louis Blues. Trailing by three with a minute 11 go. Now, the disadvantage of this power play is that it's going to be spread. You see Doug Gilmore kind of helping the cause there, doing a little pirouette, ice capade style. But the power play will be split over two periods. It's really difficult to get that momentum and the power play going when you come back and only have, they will have 49 seconds of it in the second period. It's imperative that St. Louis score now to get back in this game. And the Blues not only have been outscored in the second period, four to one, they have been outshot 18 to seven. 18-49, a McGinnis looking penalty. Federko trying to win this face off, get the puck back to Natras or Gilmore. And he's unable to. And consequently, Sheehy clears it the length of the ice. On the power play, Federko, Gilmore, Natras, Sutter, and Hunter for St. Louis. Natras rifling the puck in, and the Blues beaten to it. Hock and Lube trying to dart after the puck and finally pulls back, and it's Rick Natras. Hock and Lube, Doug Risebrow, Jamie McCowan, and Neil Sheehy killing the penalty in front of Mike Vernon. Hunter lifts the puck, and it sails into the crowd, and that'll bring a faceoff outside the Calgary Blue Line. And I'll tell you who was the most frustrated man on that play, Ken. If it was not that man, it was Brian Sutter, such a competitor, was skating behind the net. And when Hunter dumped it over the glass, he just out with his hands as if to say, gee, what next? Federko Sutter running. Norwood Gilmore now. Just seconds left here in this first period. Or second period. First period was scoreless. And it's down to 28 seconds to go in the second period. 4 1 Calgary. Doug Gilmore. Behind Federko. 15 seconds in the period remaining. A minute four to go in the Al McInnes penalty. Here's Federko. For Ronnie, McGowan intercepts. Sheehy helps out. And that is the end of the second period.
Boy, what a period it was. So many things to comment on. Dan Quinn, two early goals, the big difference. And after 40 minutes in game six, it's Calgary four, St. Louis one. From now until May 19th, Volkswagen deals are so special, they're practically steals. Thousands of brand new 1986 Jettas, GTIs, Golfs, and Wolfsburg limited editions are there for the taking. But these Volkswagens are going fast, so hurry in. It all ends May 19th, and missing out would be a crime. Volkswagen steal of a deal, now through May 19th. Fans, please. Mr. Garfield, welcome to Embassy Suites Hotel. My room. Oh, all our rooms are really two-room suites for the price of a single room. Beautiful. Don't change a thing. The living room, sir. Love what you've done with this room. The bedroom. This is great. I need my space. And, of course, you'll want to take advantage of Embassy Suites' free breakfast. Food. Served every morning. At Embassy Suites, you don't have to be a fat cat to enjoy the sweet life. I resemble that remark. This buds for all that you do. Like many before, you came here asking for just one thing, a chance. Sadowski. Shibowski. Sadowski is pronounced Shibowski. You're here to make a new start, but starting out's the hard part. Whatever the test, you give it your best. You show you got the heart, cause you, you make America work, and this bug's for you. Here's to you, Beechwood Aids, for that clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. Hey, Sid. You make America work, and this bug's for you. The Calgary Flames are just 20 minutes away from the NHL Stanley Cup Finals against the Montreal Canadiens and perhaps just 20 minutes left in the St. Louis Blues season. We're in our second intermission and welcome back everybody alongside the son of one of the all time greats in the National Hockey League. I'd like you to meet Brett Hall who was drafted back in 1984 by the Calgary Flames. I guess they had some pretty good intuition back then. Well I'd like to think they do. I, I'm just uh, waiting for my chance to get in there right now. He's still at the University of Minnesota at Duluth. And just about three years ago, Brett scored 105 goals for a junior team in British Columbia. Have you always had that blistering slap shot like the old man? Uh, sort of, you know. Uh, it kind of comes natural uh, when uh, uh, you become the son of uh, him. He had the great shot. To, but I always have, you know, and uh, I try to use it to the best of my advantage. Brett, what's the most difficult part of being the son of a famous athlete? Well, I think it's a lot of pressure, you know. Uh, they expect you and they compare you to them, and uh, uh, it's kind of not really fair because he was always uh, in a class by himself, and uh, uh, we play a different style, and uh, it's tough when they uh, compare him to me. What's the best advice your dad ever gave you? Oh, just work hard, you know, and uh, uh, do the things that you do well, do them, and don't try to do anything different. What's the worst advice Bobby gave you? Oh, he's never given, you, uh, given me real bad advice, so I'm really not too sure. I imagine having a coach like Bob Johnson, who came out of the University of Wisconsin, will help make the adjustment from college hockey to pro hockey easy for you. Well, I think so. You know, uh, for a college kid, I think it's uh, tough to come into a situation where uh, uh, the coach uh, isn't really involved with the college uh, players and he doesn't have many on the team. And if you can go to a, a team that has uh, other college players, that uh, kind of gives you a little uh, uh, kind of a college atmosphere and it helps out. Have you had a chance to decide on a major yet or being drafted by the Flames and being so close to a pro career, do you not worry about it yet? Oh, I would say uh, psych major, but uh, uh, now that I have uh, signed with Calgary, I, uh, I'm just going to take a few courses every summer and try to get my degree that way. Who's been the biggest help in the Flames locker room to you so far? Oh, there's been many, uh, like John Tonelli and Doug Risebrow and Lanny McDonald. They're all uh, uh, seasoned veterans, and they really helped me out and make me feel uh, as part of the team. You know, it's tough. Uh, I'm not in the lineup right now and waiting for a chance, but uh, they make me feel right in there. Well, if the Blues pull it out, we'll see you Wednesday night in Calgary. Otherwise, we'll see you Friday night as the Canadians skate in. Thank you for joining us. Brett Hall, the son of the Golden Jet Bobby Hall, former star, of course, with the Chicago Blackhawks. And he gets the stylish Laura Sports Watch. 
Loris, the official timepiece of ESPN. The Blues on the short end. They trail the Calgary Flames. Maybe 20 minutes left in St. Louis season. The Flames looking to meet Montreal. We'll be back after these messages. Stop. Don't pay supermarket prices for products you can get for less. Come to International Bulk Food in Dearborn. We have over 200 items, including spices, pasta, dried fruits, nuts, beans and peas, candy and dairy products. Don't pay several dollars for prepackaged spices and cake mixes. Get the exact amount you need for only pennies. Get as little or as much as you want. There's no limit. And don't forget, save extra on everyday specials. International Bulk Food is your neighborhood store. Shop with us and save. International Bulk Food, 15031 Warren Avenue, between Greenfield and Chase. To your GMC Detroit Truck Center and enter the GMC Truck Great Escape sweepstakes. Win exciting national prizes, including prizes you can win just by registering. Then take off in a hot new GMC truck with gold medal option packages on S15 Jimmys and full-size pickups. With GMC's exclusive Commitment Plus customer satisfaction program. So escape to your GMC Detroit Truck Center for fabulous prizes and great GMC truck values. The GMC Truck Great Escape Sweepstakes at the GMC Detroit Truck Center on Wyoming near Fort... In pro football, the Washington Redskins had their over-the-hill gang. In the National Hockey League, the Calgary Flames have their over-the-hill line. The line consisting of veterans John Tonelli, Doug Risebrow, and Lanny McDonald. Over 30 years experience, eight Stanley Cup rings between them, and in the playoffs so far, 20 goals, 24 assists for 44 points. Doug Smith has more on the over-the-hill line of Calgary. Lanny McDonald, Doug Risebrow, and John Tonelli comprise the oldest line in the NHL. They've been dubbed the not-yet-ready-for-retirement players, the over-the-hill gang. But there's nothing over the hill the way they've been playing in these 86 playoffs. Well, I'll tell you what, everyone has been talking about the old-timers and how uh, basically we're over the hill, but I think we're giving everybody a shot in the arm. And as we were talking before, uh, Willie Shoemaker uh, wins the Kentucky Derby, Jack Nicklaus wins the Masters, so there's definitely life in a few old legs out there. A lot of it is in a kidding way. I know I probably you hear a lot. I know my father called me the other day, and he was listening to some of the TV reports saying about the overhill gangs is it's amazing to be considered old at 32 so I know it doesn't bother me uh, maybe some ways a bit of an incentive too when I broke in there was uh, I think about four or five on our team one guy was 39 well the air has shifted there just isn't that many guys that are 30 around but I think all our uh, experience has paid off uh, uh, any given situation on the ice we know where each other is going to be and uh, uh, maybe because we are a little older we have to we put pressure on ourselves to uh, back one another up and be in, a, be in the right position. The veteran trio have a combined age of 94, and they supply the Flames with an abundance of leadership. That was one of the main reasons that we wanted John Tonelli was that, uh, you know, uh, he'll probably play for a couple of years after Lanny and Doug have retired, and we want that continuity of leadership on and off the ice. Nice to see some guys who go to the piano bars and not the discos, but there's a problem involved here. I think the Flames' problems won't be ligaments, it'll be prostate surgery, the way this team is going. Is there a sense, Lanny, that you have a chance to grasp something real special? Well, I think that's not only the three of us, that's everybody in the dressing room, and you don't get that many chances to, to say win it all, and we want to make sure that we're giving everything uh, to the cause. With the Flames, I'm Doug Smith, ESPN.
Thanks, Doug. I love that mustache on Lanny McDonald. And he's the one guy in that over-the-hill line that has yet to capture a Stanley Cup ring in his years with Toronto, the Colorado Rockies, and now the Calgary Flames. And you know, you know he wants it bad. He may just get it. Calgary leads St. Louis 4-1 to one after two. More on the road to the Cup in a moment. Right now, nothing's hotter than Arby's Lean Roast Beef. Lean, be lean, be a lean dream, lean, down, all around. Arby's Roast Beef, lean, delicious, and hot, 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 hot. on the lean team. Lean on me, hot. Smart shoppers at Fairlane Town Center go for the lean at Arby's. Fire burns down a carpeting mill in Georgia. Now, we bought out that mill, and the carpeting is on sale. But, boss, we only got one color. Charcoal. At Independent Carpet and Draperies, we'll beat those sale prices. We have the largest selection of name brand carpeting, no wax vinyl, and hardwood floors, plus friendly personal service. At Independent Carpet and Draperies, you don't have to wait for a disaster sale to save money. <laughs> Good evening, Bob Lee back at the Sports Center newsroom. Back to the hockey as the Flames look to close out the Blues. 20 more minutes of action yet to go. What's happening in baseball? The Orioles, they had that Earl Weaver offense tuned to perfection tonight. They tied the game in the ninth inning and a Jim Dwyer pinch hit homer. And then Lee Lacey singled in the winner. 4-3 win. Baltimore over Chicago. Texas bombing Cleveland, even though they're playing the game under protest. The Rangers up 19-2. Tigers in Kansas City now into the eighth inning and the Royals leading at 6-3. Yanks have the lead on Minnesota 4-2 in the seventh. Henderson and Laudner with homers in that game. In the National League today, Reds tonight a winner over Montreal 4-3 as Milner wins it with a homer that came on the top of the ninth inning. And a Tim Tuffle RBI single for the Mets in the bottom of the ninth inning as they win it one to nothing over the Braves. Roger McDowell the winner. Philly and Houston. That game now into the eighth inning, a 4-1 lead with Tony Walker. The one run, it came on a homer for Houston. We'll get back to Tom Meese in the hockey right after this word. Bob Lee in the Sports Center newsroom. For all that you do. Like many before, you came here asking for just one thing. A chance. Sadowski. Shibowski. Sadowski is pronounced Shibowski. You're here to make a new start. But starting out's the hard part. Whatever the test, you give it your best. You'll show you've got the hard cards. You Here's to you, Beechwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. Hey, Sid. You make America work, and this bug's for you. Judith, could you send $350 to Santa Fe? Right away. Could you possibly send me $709 at Marie? Dad, is there any way you could send the money today? To send someone money fast, come to Western Union. We'll make sure it gets to any of our 9,000 locations, usually in 15 minutes or less. Keep in touch. Western Union, the fastest way to send money. When the big Q flows, America goes. Hey, that truck runs. A fisher and son doesn't. Only gets the big Q. Baker State. Well, you can depend on number one. Yo, Pop, they start with Pennsylvania grade crude. Nothing like Quaker State. It's a one-of-a-kind formula. Stable viscosity, keeps the oil flowing, protecting no matter what. No substitute for quality. <laughs> I got two great partners. <laughs> Quaker State. The big Q stands for quality. Always has, always will. Things not looking good for the St. Louis Blues. They trail Calgary 4-1. to You know, after the World Series, St. Louis fans vented their uh, anger on umpire uh, Mr. Denkinger, Don Denkinger, the American League umpire who made that call in the ninth inning of the uh, 
a sixth game of the World Series. Well, now they may have a new target to vent their anger at, and that is Kerry Frazier, the referee of tonight's game. He is one of the best referees in the National Hockey League, but he's the man that made the calls that gave Calgary two successive two-man advantages. Two goals resulted, and that's the big reason Calgary has a 4-1 to one lead. But there are some rays of hope because uh, earlier on in the playoffs, Toronto had St. Louis down three goals to none, couldn't hold a lead. Can St. Louis come back in this one, Ken Wilson? Well, anything could happen, but uh, it would certainly look like it's a grim situation for the Blues. And Bill Clement, we talked about Kerry Fraser. There are a lot of things that can be said about the penalties. I know you have some things to say, and I, I simply have to say it's unfortunate, and I think that's the biggest point we're trying to make, that penalties and shorthanded situations may have decided this game and ended the series. You can't really blame the referee. You can say, hey, the Blues took a couple of dumb penalties. That's another way to look at it. That's one way to look at it, Ken, but... To be honest, I am saddened, and uh, the game is not over. It's doubtful that the St. Louis Blues have what it takes to come back. Now, if they do, I'm a believer in the St. Louis Blues. And there are people in Calgary watching. They're going to say, yeah, Clement's cheering for the St. Louis Blues. That is not the case at all. We're at the Flames in the blue situation, facing elimination, and going out with the penalties the way they were, whether they were called correctly or not, just to go out of that, that way. I know that there are players sitting in that locker room that when this game ends will actually break down and cry because they put so much into this hockey season and to see it go down the drain with intangibles like that, not being outworked, but taking penalties themselves. Uh, it saddens me to see a team go down that way. I, you know, what can I say? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think everyone feels that way. And I think it's human nature to come into this third period and root for the Blues and root for a seventh game because everybody, except for diehard Calgary Flames fans, would kind of like to see a seventh game. I love Calgary so much, I'd love to go back there for another day. Yeah, it's a great town and we could cool off a little. One thing we haven't talked about, oh, it's not that warm here tonight. I don't know about you, but I'm dying of the heat. And the guys downstairs, one of the problems the Blues are going to have is also the heat and coming back. The quality of the ice, we talked about that. The worse the condition of the ice, the hotter the building, the tougher it is to play catch up. They've got a big mountain right in front of their faces right now. The Campbell Conference Championship could be resolved here in the next 20 minutes. Back to Tom Meads. Can somebody get Bill Clement a fan so he can cool off at the hot and steamy St. Louis Arena? You know, in that Toronto series, the Blues were down 3 0 after two periods in game five, but came on back to win that in overtime by a score of 4 3. They're down 4 1, same goal uh, margin, three goals to the Calgary Flames, but. Uh, I don't think it looks very promising for them to come back in this game the way they played. As we go to highlights, very early in the second period, no score. Two-man advantage for Calgary. Paul Reinhardt with a puck to Joe Mullen. There's the pass to Mullen. He passes across the crease to Dan Quinn, who scores. It is 1-0. Another two-man advantage. After intercepting a clearing pass, Paul Reinhardt to Dan Quinn. There's Reinhardt looking for Quinn in the left faceoff circle. He one-times it past Wamsley. It's 2-0. Now, Rob Ramage for St. Louis passes to Cliff Ronning. The little kid off the Canadian Olympic team around the net catches Mike Vernon unaware, and it's 2-1. to one. And the fans are in the game. St. Louis is in the game. But Jim Poplinski picks up a loose puck and puts a backhander by Rick Wamsley right here. I think this is the goal that really took the starch out of the Blues. Then late in the second period, off the faceoff, nobody covers John Tonelli. He breaks in, loose puck, and he'll just shoot it right by the glove hand low of Wamsley. And so the scoring in the second period, Quinn for Calgary made it one to nothing at 20 seconds. Then it was Dan Quinn again at 157, made it two to nothing. Then little Cliff Ronning scored for St. Louis to bring the Blues back 2-1. But Jim Poplinski made it 3-1 at 919. And John Tonelli, remember that over the hill line at 14-44. It is 4-1 in favor of the Calgary Flames. They're just 20 minutes away from advancing to the finals against Montreal. Let's go back to the arena. Ken Wilson and Bill Clement. Gentlemen. In the penalty box, Al McInnes, Rob Ramage serving a misconduct. 49 seconds left in the St. Louis power play, and Calgary wins the faceoff, and McCowan clears it the length of the ice. Wamsley leaving the puck for Natras, also on with Gilmore, Ronning, Federko, and Hunter. That's the power play for St. Louis. Only their third power play goal of the playoff series in this game tonight, their only goal, the Cliff Ronning goal mentioned by Tom Meade. Wamsley to Natras. 20 seconds left in the Calgary penalty. And the Blues power play not exactly in perfect shape here. Federko. Gilmore. Five seconds left in the power play opportunity. Natras. Gilmore, 
McInnes back on. Patterson trying to clear does Bourgeois lugs it in offside and the game is early in the third period 55 seconds old 4 1 Calgary and Ken, I have a feeling that the Calgary Flames will be doing their best imitation of the St. Louis Blues in this third period laying back not taking any chances they will send one man in deep they will have two forwards back to come back with whoever is breaking out of the St. Louis zone. They have a three goal lead no use taking chances and Bob Johnson is certainly aware of that. The onus is on St. Louis Bourgeois from the point they shot the save Wickenheiser rod and stopped the second time three successive saves now an effort by Pazlowski to flex wide. Mike Vernon instrumental there as Wickenheiser is unable to center. Then Bell intercepts and the shot caught by Vernon and he and Ryan Sutter mix it up. Well, I can guarantee you that that is not an original. What we're seeing is a carryover confrontation. I told you earlier in the game that Vernon had clipped Sutter going through the crease and I would probably think that that wasn't even the first confrontation. Brian Sutter is an instigator. Watch this save. Mike Vernon now has stopped. 14 shots. They've had a total of 15 on him. And I'll tell you, he earned a big part of his paycheck right there. That goal could have put St. Louis, at least in an emotional condition, to, to attempt to close that gap even more, Ken. Oh, look at that frustration from Doug Wickenheiser. And that line goes off and says, oh, we couldn't do it. We should have. Federko will face off with Mike Eves, Vernon, and the referee, Kerry Frazier. Kerry Frazier. A very animated and vocal referee and many try to keep their distance but he likes to communicate with the players. I will tell you he was ha he will have his share of communicating to do when this game is over because very few people will hit him let him slide that that at least people from St. Louis people from the St. Louis organization. No one's going to let Kerry Fraser slide. They will confront him any chance they get. Norwood back over skating. 1820 to go in the third period Calgary four, St. Louis one Hunter out of his own end Norwood back to Hunter over to Federko tipped out by Reinhardt here's Ronnie the goal scorer for the Blues Reinhardt clears it away and Natras back it will be icing called against Calgary. Can anytime you see, excuse me, anytime you see a man like Paul Reinhardt simply dump the puck off the boards and bank it down for an icing, you know that they have a plan in this third period that we mentioned, and that is strictly a prevent defense, take absolutely no chances. If you cannot see anyone, dump it out of the zone. Let's take the face off in our end. Paul Reinhardt is an indication that that is what they're doing. It'll be Joel Otto facing off against Rick Mahar. with Raglan and Beers. The line has seen limited duty. Bell and Bourgeois are the point men. The Blues going without Rob Ramage serving a misconduct carrying over from the second period. Blues win the draw. Bell quick shot deflects into the crowd and there'll be another face off. Well with Ramage in the penalty box that will mean 10 minutes without Ramage. They spent what was it 15 minutes without Bourgeois. So their two top defensemen have been out of the lineup for 25 minutes and we're talking about a 60 minute hockey game that had to hurt the Blues Kevin. Two of the Calgary goals coming while they had a two man advantage. Another goal on a one man advantage power play for Calgary. So of the five goals tonight only one scored with both teams at full strength. Bell back. They had a fine rookie season a year ago with the Nordiques. Gives the puck away. Now Mullen moves right in. The pass fails to reach Peplinski on the fine effort by Bourgeois. And Bourgeois knocks Mullen down. Plays it back to Bell. Bell, Bourgeois, Raglan, Mahar, and Beers for St. Louis. And they're really being hemmed in here by the flame. Peplinski trying to center to Mullen. At the point, McCowan. Otto, great chance. And that stop. Three minutes gone in the third period. 4-1 Calgary. Here's Gilmore moving right in, and he's poke checked by Tanelli. Mattress beats Rise proud of the puck. The Flames 
16 minutes 45 seconds away from reaching the Stanley Cup Finals. And that puck hit by a Flames player's high stick onto a teammate. The whistle stops play. Ken, what a great potek by John Tonelli. You know, it's so difficult to get the puck and not the skates. And the ruling is that if you trip the man but don't get the puck, you end up with a penalty. Eddie Beers makes a nice pass here to Doug Gilmore, but look at Tonelli. Boy, just with the tip of his blade, never even took Gilmore off stride, never even came close to tripping him. That's good defensive effort. And watch how quickly Joel Otto turns around and gets this shot away. I think it may have hit the side of the net, but what a crowd in there. That's the ideal time to shoot from that location. Blues back to live action, hemmed in their own zone. Lanny McDonald. And the Blues take over. Sutter up on the left wing to Gilmore. Gilmore stapled to the boards by Sheehy and Lanny McDonald. Edmonds too far for Tonelli. There'll be no icing. 4 1 flame. They'll make a player change. Here's Rick Natras. He'll let it go. And a save by Vernon. Sheehy. Poke check. Sutter. Trying to get in position to center. Now Gilmore in front. And Pazlowski taken down. Another shot by Sutter. A penalty coming up as Vernon, after the penalty was to be called, made a tremendous save on Brian Sutter. 4 1 Calgary. Designed to move you like never before. Danny Quinn of the Calgary Flames will now enter the penalty column. He has two goals and one assist, so he's on the scoreboard. And here in the third period, with 15 minutes and 49 seconds to go, he ties up one of the St. Louis players in front of his own net. And Mike Vernon had to be a great help to him. Blues power play. Gilmore. And unable to deflect is Hunter, and there'll be another penalty. Another penalty as McInnes knocked Hunter down, and I'll be darned. The Calgary Flames will be two men short. Well, I won't be darned, Ken Wilson. I just wondered how long it would take Kerry Fraser to try and even the score. And if that wasn't an innocent call, you can see Al McGinnis. He almost has a smirk on his face. Watch the lower part of your screen. There's, well, we've lost the lower right of your screen. And he gives Hunter a little shove from behind, which is hardly a glaring penalty, especially with the man in the box. And we'll tell you what Kerry Fraser's trying to do. He wants to even it up. I don't think he wants to be the cause of the St. Louis Blues missing out on the playoffs. And it's a shame for Kerry Wilson that he's gotten himself, or Kerry Fraser at least, that he's gotten himself in this position, Ken. Bob Johnson with opportunity to complain. Quinn cross checking 411. McGinnis cross checking 455. The Blues power play tonight, one for five. Thus, they are three for 30 with a man advantage in this series. But here, a two man advantage. Federko and Risebrow for this faceoff. Ronnie and Hunter are with Federko. Gilmore on one point, Natras on the other. This is where the Blues really miss Rob Rambit serving a misconduct penalty. And Jamie McCowan clears the puck. It goes into the crowd off Gilmore. Thus, the faceoff will be in the neutral zone. Boy, that's kind of a, a big play at this stage. Now, the Flames have two men in the box. One has a minute and 41. That's Danny Quinn. Al McInnes has a minute and 55. Every time you can move that play into the neutral zone for a faceoff, you can almost guarantee 20 seconds being knocked off of both of those. Risebrow killing the penalty with Reinhardt and McCowan. Hunter playing it behind the net. McCowan trying to get away from Ronnie. And Hunter steps in. Ronnie with a putt to Federko. Ronnie stopped, knocked down by McCowan. Hunter's in front. Ronnie trying to set it up. Natras, Ronnie, Federko, the shot, and Gilmore stopped by Vernon. They got the shot they wanted. A minute eight left in the two-man St. Louis advantage. Flames lead the Blues four to one. 
Flames looking to end this series here as Mike Eves intercepts. They lead three victories to two. Eves on Ronnie. Takes the shot. Wansley the save. Now Ronnie for St. Louis. 48 seconds left in the two-man Blues advantage. Gilmore after the puck. Beaten to it by Reinhardt. Eves unable to clear. Wittgenheiser. In front. The save by Vernon on Wittgenheiser. Back to Natris. Over to Gilmore. Pazlowski. Badur goes in front with Wickenheiser. Gilmore. Natris. 23 seconds left in the two-man advantage for St. Louis. They trail 4-1. to one. Third period. Natris the save. A skate save by Vernon on Natris. Wickenheiser the shot. He scores. It's 4-2. paid off a deflection 30 feet out in front of Mike Vernon with the fans going crazy demanding that St. Louis shoot on that power play they showed the restraint they showed the patience they moved it around moved it around finally Doug Wickenheiser pulled the trigger boy what a lift that will be for the St. Louis Blues Ken Doug Wickenheiser who minutes ago was showing the frustration in his 18th playoff game picks up his first playoff goal Blues still have the man advantage. One man advantage for 12 seconds. Here they come. Ramage back from his misconduct penalty. Getting the puck in. 4-2. Flames lead the Blues. Norwood able to keep it in. The shot at the goal post. And a Sutter shot stopped by Vernon. Now McKinnis back up. The Flames are at full strength. And the Blues hit the goal post. And before the icing can be called, some debris thrown on the ice and play is stopped. That goal, Doug Wickenheiser, coming at six minutes here in the third period, a two-man advantage. Boy, we talked earlier in the game about the goalpost being part of Rick Wansley's equipment. Watch this. Brian Sutter got a piece of that with his stick and deflected it, and he one-handed it back towards the net, and it looked to a lot of the fans as if it went in because it jumped up on the side of the net. Boy, what heat. I'll tell you what, Ken Wilson. Mike Vernon is has faced 10 shots thus far. The Blues at this stage of the third period, we have not yet played seven minutes of a 20-minute period, have taken 10 shots on Mike Vernon. Rick Wansley, at the other hand, at the other, on the other hand, has faced two shots. And if that isn't an exact mirror of the way the second period began, both with penalties and with shots. Both teams again at full strength. 13.25 to go in regulation play. Here are the Blues again. Eddie Beers can't get a good shot away. Sheehy covering him. Now Steve Bozek up to Peplinski. Peplinski and Sheehy and Mullen over the line. Pass for Mullen. It gets a break and a weak shot wide. Here's Bozek. Mullen. Sheehy and Reinhardt, the defenseman, up at the points. Blues getting hemmed in their own zone again. Peplinski centers to Mullen. He shoots oh. and scores. And you oh. can see that one coming. 5-2 Calgary. A big, big goal. Look at Bob Johnson. Joe Mullen gets the goal. And how sweet it is for him as he comes back against his old team. And Ken, one of the Blues had lost his stick. You can see on the left part of your screen, they're trying to exchange sticks. That's what happened. I mean to tell you, Joey Mullen just drove this thing like a howitzer into the back of the net. Boy, he let it go. You can see Federko going out. The puck was out of the net almost as quickly as it went in. St. Louis Blues ended up with a broken stick. Unfortunate for them, but great execution by Poplinski and a great hockey shot by Joey Mullen. That is Mullen's 10th playoff goal. 10 playoff goals for Joe Mullen. He has had quite a playoff. 7.04, the time of the goal, just a minute and four after Wickenheiser had scored. And Joe Mullen now has scored 10 playoff goals. That's the most goals by any player in this year's Stanley Cup competition. Ken, had they not scored, I, if I had a chance, I was going to try and explain that it was a crucial stage for the Flames. 
defensively with the crowd up with St. Louis obviously going through the big adrenaline flow. Flames had to hang tough. Well, they did more than that. The best thing that you can do to try and squash that big rush of adrenaline that a team has when they feel as if they're getting back into the game is notch a goal on them. Boy, they sure did that. Rise Brown shoots the puck in. Wamsley the save. Here's Charlie Bourgeois. Now down to 12.45 to go. Blues again trailing by three. Give and go, Wickenheiser. Wide, Ragland. Wickenheiser, unable to center. McInnes, unable to clear. McDonald, likewise. McInnes goes down, the pass comes back. Bourgeois on his backhand to his forehand. And the shot deflects wide. Well, the Blues come right back with some pressure. And the puck goes out of play. There's 12-14 to go. Game six of the Campbell Conference Championship. Calgary on top, 5-2. These small cars are tougher than ever on oil. Their high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. Their searing heat can begin to break down in oil immediately. That's why there's Castrol, the only leading motor oil that in every grade provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol before your engine does something to get you heated up. Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. 17,801, the announced paid attendance. Standing room only at the arena in St. Louis. It has been an evening. It's been a trip on a roller coaster for these fans. Getting behind early in the second period, two to nothing. Blues keep getting big goals to come back, but certainly not enough. And the Flames, very tenacious. Any team that can eliminate the Edmonton Oilers deserves everything they can get. They have been tremendous in the playoffs. Patterson gets the puck to center ice. Natras playing it to Gilmore on to Pazlowski. A shot kicked out. Rebound center shoots and scores. Oh, and the roller coaster ride continues. It's only fitting that this man's hard work pays off for him, Brian Sutter. I have to think Mike Vernon did not see him coming. He kicked the rebound out right onto his stick when he was in no man's land positionally. Take a look at how he just kicks it over. I'm sure he's saying, oh, no, if he could have that one kick of the rebound back. But Brian Sutter really drilled it home. Brian Sutter has played in only eight of the St. Louis Blues' 18 playoff games. That is his first playoff goal. 8.08 the time of the goal, and it is 5-3 Calgary. And here we go again. It keeps seeming as though the next goal is going to decide it one way or another, but every time there's a score, the situation changes rather quickly again. Here's Peplinski. Good feed from Mullen. They shot, and Wamsley closes the pass. Pazlowski and Gilmore assisting on Sutter's goal again at 8.08 of the third period. McCowan shooting the puck in. And this will be icing as Federko touches it. And the faceoff will go way back near Calgary goaltender Mike Vernon. Ken, tell me if you don't think that both teams have shown enough resilience to be winners of this series. I mean, St. Louis was virtually out of it. They came into the period down 4-1. Bounce back with a goal. The Flames go ahead to make it 5-2. You would think that the Blues might fold. I want to give big credit and pay tribute to both of these teams right now. Before this thing is even over, I'm impressed. They're showing so much courage and so much heart. Reinhardt for Calgary. Just clearing it out. There'll be no icing. The linesman rule that the Blues could have played it. 11-10 remaining in the third period. 5-3 Calgary. Bruce Bell shooting the puck in. Ragland darting across the ice, beaten to it by Reinhardt. Then Lanny McDonald clears the zone. A two-goal lead, still rather comfortable. But against the St. Louis Blues, not as comfortable as you might like. Here's Bell into the corner. Beards, fans, McDonald for the Flames. Out to John Tonelli, one-on-one -on -one with Ramage back. Tonelli shoots high over the net. 
John Tonelli sets up McDonald in the save. I really like this line of Rise, Brow, McDonald, and Tonelli. They could really give the Montreal Canadiens fits should Calgary win this series. I think that'll be a very, very big line for the Flames. Here's Pazlowski. He's got Sutter in front. Sutter takes the shot, never really gets a stick on it. Now Colin Patterson, unable to get the puck out, kept in. Pazlowski fans, Patterson finally pokes the puck to center ice. There are 10 minutes to go in the third period. The Blues seemingly just will not quit. Gilmore, shot hit Sheehy. Now Sutter behind the net. Puck taken away by McCowan and cleared out. This will be an icing call against Calgary. 9.39 to go. Flames 5, Blues 3. Think of all the things that are tough in our world. You're bound to think of this. Big Ford pickups. They have a tradition of toughness. They're built Ford Tough. Get 7.9% financing on new Ford full-size pickups at your participating Ford dealer now. Blues win the face-off. Bourgeois has trouble handling the puck. 5-3 flames. Ken Wilson with Bill Clement as the Blues and their fans try to keep it alive here in St. Louis. Jamie McCowan around Norwood. Takes the shot and a stick save by Wanflew. Calgary, again I'll say it, they have a very talented team and to beat Edmonton, maybe the biggest event in the Stanley Cup playoffs when the finals are over, that still might be the big story of the 86 Stanley Cup season. Back for the puck, Al McInnes. There's no question the Flames and their fans felt this would be a four or five game series and they've had plenty to handle in the St. Louis Blues. John Tonelli with Mullen and Peplinski in front and Mullen can't get the puck. Play turns the other way. Here come the Blues. Spiderko. The shot off Sheehy. The Blues want a line change. 840 remaining. Reinhardt the outlet to Tonelli with McDonald and Risebrow. Well, the veterans seen a lot of ice time now for Calgary, trying to protect the two-goal lead. Raglan shooting the puck in. Played to Tonelli. He's hit by Raglan and Reinhardt. Has it deflect off Natras. Then Wickenheiser gets to the puck. And as you would expect, the team behind seems to have the extra step right now. And it's the Blues. Bourgeois clears the lane. Cavallini fans. And the puck cleared by Calgary. There are eight minutes remaining in the third period and maybe in the hockey season for the St. Louis Blues. McCollum. Out to Eves. On to Colin Patterson. Eves is in front. The pass to him. Stopped by Wickenheiser. To Pazlowski. And then he is stopped. Here's Ramage. Dan Quinn, two goals for Calgary. Peplinski, Tonelli, and Mullen have scored the others. Hock and Lube fails to complete the play. Ramage, rink wide, right on the mark to Sutter. Brian Sutter, unable to get around McKinnis. The Blues, three goals. Cliff Ronning, Doug Wickenheiser, and Brian Sutter. Here's Sutter. And the play is offside, and most everyone unable to hear the offside whistle. 7 10 left, Calgary 5, St. Louis 3. Welcome to Adventures in Insurance. Today we're talking to the keeper of the Hartford Moose. It's a stag. Oh, tell me, just how old is the stag? As old as the Hartford, 175. No kidding. That's right. As the Hartford's become a leading force in business, home, auto, and life insurance over the years, the stag's hung in there, sort of keeping an eye on things. That's fascinating. Where's the stag now? How should I know? I'm the keeper, not the finder. Year after year, you'll like doing business with the Hartford, the insurance people of ITT. Face-off coming up outside the Calgary Blue Line. The Blues out shooting the Flames in this period, 12-7. However, overall, the Flames with a big advantage in shots. And 
and the Flames lead 5-3. Calgary now only needs to kill off seven more minutes and they'll face Montreal in the finals of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Look at that Mullen move around Norwood. Mullen, the drive blocked by Natrus. Mullen back to the point to Reinhardt. Over to Sheehy, and Mullen is down in the corner. He and Sutter had come together. Well, they're old line mates, to say nothing of teammates and old friends. Well, they're friends, too, and somebody's jumping in there now for the Flames, trying to get a Brian Sutter, and you can see who's on the outside of the pack trying to get in there, too, none other than Joey Mullen. Brian Sutter, I would judge by the way he stopped and looked down at Mullen, didn't do it intentionally. Brian Sutter has been known to take vicious shots at a lot of people, but say at this stage of the game, he knows Joey Mullen well enough. Look at who's watching now. Sutter's actually on the outside. Probably end up seeing Sutter and Mullen talking to each other. And rather happily. Although, how many times have you seen Sutter brothers run at each other and almost get in fights they in only, the NHL? They only talk in a friendly fashion after the game, Kevin. 646 to go. Calgary on top. 5-3. Meet the people who made the original wine coolers. <laughs> Years ago, they blended white wine and real fruit in a tub at a party on the beach. And now that original blend comes in a bottle. <laughs> California Cooler, the real stuff. Well, the altercation may have begun with Brian Sutter and Joey Mullen, but somehow Mr. Norwood of the Blues finds himself sitting and facing two minutes, as does one of the Flames. We'll try and pick up who it is. Jim Peplinski goes in the penalty box for Calgary. He has been there before tonight, where just about everybody has. Boy, isn't that the truth? Bob Johnson, it's not over yet. And of course, when this is over, it's only just beginning. Bob Johnson said as the team walked onto the ice and we were getting ready to come up here and start to work, he said, boy, what a nice plane ride it'll be back to Calgary if we can get out of here with a win tonight. The Blues hoping that they can charter tomorrow afternoon to Calgary for game seven. They need at least two goals here in the next six minutes and 40 seconds. Coincidental penalties, both teams at full strength. Here's John Tanelli. The shot over the net. Boy, you just can't help but watch John Tonelli and say in a final series, what a big man he would be. And you know that Cliff Fletcher figured that out a long time ago. Yeah. And picked him up. And he's been strong in the playoffs. Blues offside play. And the faceoff will come back out to the neutral zone as Ramage and Tonelli are ready to go at it. Ramage just kind of trying to get the go to Tonelli at center ice. Started after him with his stick pitched up and then kind of deked around him and Tonelli went into a defensive posture and embarrassed himself just a bit. Well I'll tell you it's I don't know if it would be called an embarrassment to shy away from that man with six minutes and 13 seconds to go in the opposition's building when you're holding a two goal lead. Uh, I'm not sure that it would have been anybody would have been wisely served. 6.13 to go. Flames lead the Blues 5-3. to three. Blues trying to force Game 7 Wednesday night in Calgary. Flames trying to end it. The opening game of the Stanley Cup Final Series will be Friday night. And the Flames are offside. Montreal will be well rested to face either the Flames or the Blues. They sure will, Ken, and that's kind of a key as well, should Calgary hang on to win this. Uh, it's a, it's kind of a nice amount of rest. Tonight is, what day of the week is this, by the way, Ken? I meant to ask you that this morning. Is this Monday? It must be, because yesterday was Sunday, and Thank there was you. not a playoff game, and we haven't had many of those nights right. lately. So they will fly home, the, the Calgary Flames, should they hang on to win. They will have Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and the nice thing is they will be able to wait at home. They probably would have preferred four games, but boy, if they hang on to win, winning it in six with three days off is a heck of a lot better than 48 hours off having to meet the Montreal Canadiens. 
after only one day in between. And that was what Bob Johnson said was one of the reasons the Flames got off to a slow start against St. Louis. They lost the opener since they only had a 24-hour period between games to savor the victory over Edmonton. You have to adjust emotionally between series. Sutter with Gilmore. Pazlowski. And coming back was Reinhardt. Sutter unable to center. Now Vernon grabs the puck off the side of the net to hold it for a faceoff. 542 is the time remaining. Mike Vernon, another young rookie goaltender who has stood extremely tall in Stanley Cup playoff action. Well, he sure has. He made one crucial error on Brian Sutter's goal tonight. He's getting a lot of help right now from everybody. No one will be taking a lazy step or a lazy turn, and they're saying, come on, guys, we each have to work about another 45 seconds to a minute and a half, two minutes maximum for some players, and the series will be ours. This game was scoreless after one period. Flames led after two periods, four to one. It is now 5-3 Calgary, 5.42 to go. Federko wins the draw. Bell to Ramage, towards the net, knocked down by McCollum. He's got Mullen on the right side. Bozak on his left. Mullen after the puck with Bell. Here's Otto. Quick shot saved by Wamsley. Bozak hasn't played much tonight, but when he's played, he's done what he's done throughout the series. And that buzz around. 5-3, Calgary leads it. Mark Hunter. Eddie Beers. Shot wide, and Vernon, a nice job playing the puck off the end boards. Let's check in with Jim Kelly. All right, Ken, the two best college baseball teams in America play live and exclusively on ESPN Monday, May 19th, 3 o'clock Eastern time. The LSU Tigers and Florida State, they've got the best records in the country, and they'll be going head-to-head -head on ESPN for the outright title of the nation's number one. College baseball, Louisiana State against Florida State, Monday, May 19th at 8 o'clock Eastern time. 5.08 to go. And, Bill, what about the bouncing boards here in the St. Louis arena? They're mocked throughout most of the league because sometimes the soft, soft shots will catapult deep into the slot, and the dead spots, well, they don't carry them as expected. Have they been a factor in this series? I don't really think so. It certainly hasn't tonight, although some people have complained about it. And I think the St. Louis Blues might just come up with a new set of boards and a new whole new shipment of glass for around the boards in the offseason. At least that's the rumor. But some players have complained about it. I can't remember any specific incidents. Let me at least say this. It hasn't determined the outcome of a game. Down to 5.02 to go. Calgary leading 5-3. They lead in this best of seven Campbell Conference Championship Series. Three victories to two. Ragland trying to cover up. Keeps the puck away from McDonald. Here's Bourgeois to Herb Ragland. Over to Wickenheiser. It doesn't click. Two rookies, Raglan and Ronnie on with Wickenheiser, and it's offside, St. Louis. Flames five, Blues three. This is an expose on the new Ford Escort EXP. Expressive. Expansive. Experience a new form of two-seat excitement. Ford Escort EXP. Get 6.9% financing at your participating Ford dealer now.